another day another video welcome back to the channel everybody today we're watching the big bang theory this is the final episode of the third season hope you guys have been enjoying it so far if you like to watch today's full episode this is available for free in the link in the description below just clicking it put the password in and enjoy so who would have thought we'd be starting the final episode of season three already you know i feel like we're just absolutely flying through it what a great show i'm really excited to see what we have in store for us can't wait to move into season four hopefully we see more of bernadette you know i've always been asking for one of the persons you know one of the gang to get into a relationship kind of had two this season we had the penny and leonard at the start not really kind of worked out but now we've got the bernadette and howard which is exciting uh never really expected him to be one to be in a relationship <laughs> you know it's going to be really good to see if we progress she's been in little bits here and there hasn't she bernadette and hopefully we can see her progress forward into season four and maybe a couple of seasons on her who knows maybe she could come main cast and another female presence for penny it's going to be exciting but last episode it was interesting it was kind of like a filler episode where it was basically nothing really to do with the story it was just kind of like a backstory of like uh you know how leonard actually become roommates with sheldon and obviously them at college and moving in together and the test that they had to go through and all of the hoops and the craziness and how they ended up being in the position where they are today and again like i said it wasn't really a progression of the storyline in terms of relationships and the story that we've been doing in the first two seasons but it was actually a really good episode. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, thumb, you know, like, big up to him, thumbs up, you know. Uh, if we had a couple more of those ones, we've seen it in Friends before as well. I I think in a couple of Friends episodes, they do the fat moniker and all this, and they go back and do the back kind of side of it. And again, you know, even though it doesn't really do anything to the show, it's just really interesting to see them and how they're different and, you know, change. So I enjoyed last episode, probably one of the best of the season, to be honest. I think one of my favourite ones, was it this season when he was, uh, you know, supposed to be stargazing and they all got high? I thought that was a really good episode. That was my, one of my favourite ones. And always the ones with... Um, you know, uh, Leonard's mum when she actually comes and bonds with Sheldon. Um, those are good ones as well. The Christmas episode this season. But this is a finale. Can't wait to see what we have in store for us. Hopefully you guys are excited for it. If you do enjoy it, please smash the like. Really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, let's jump into today's episode. <laughs> I should have brought an umbrella. What for? It's not gonna rain. I know that, but with skin as fair as mine, moonburn is a real possibility. Raj, no! Billions of dollars have gone into inventing the internet and filling it with pictures of naked women so we don't have to peep through windows. <laughs> it's not like that. I'm watching someone's TV. The Good Wife is on. Lenny, what is that? What is it? Relax, it's just a dirty sock. How on earth can you say dirty sock and relax in the same sentence? Hey, you know who'd really dig seeing this experiment? Penny. I wasn't aware that lunar ranging was her thing. Why don't you ask her to come up? I don't know. It's still a little weird since, you know... She dumped you? She didn't dump me. We were just in different places in the relationship. Screw you guys. I'm gonna go see if she's home. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like to point this at the moon now. Wait a second. The good wife is crying. Something's very wrong. Oh, hi. What's going on? We're up on the roof bouncing laser beams off the moon. It's pretty cool. We've got a two-meter parabolic reflector and everything. I thought you might want to see it. You bounced stuff off the moon. There's no gravity. Leonard, this is Zach. Zach Leonard. Hey. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were busy. Maybe another time. Yeah, maybe. Oh, hey, I want to see this laser thing. Uh Mate, he's tall in. <laughs> My company designs the venues for the Cheesecake Factory. It sounds easy, but there's a lot of science that goes into designing them. Oh. Uh, whoa, is that the laser? It's bitching. See, in 1917, when Albert Einstein established the theoretic foundation for the laser, his fondest hope was that the resultant device be bitchin'. In 1969, the astronauts on Apollo 11 positioned reflectors on the surface of the moon, and we're gonna shoot a laser off one of them and let the light bounce back into this photomultiplier. How can you be sure it won't blow up? See, now this is a man for Penny. That's a great question, Zach. That's a great question. How could somebody possibly think we're going to blow up the moon? We'll be able to see the beam when it leaves, but it won't be strong enough when it comes back to be seen by the naked eye. That device there will measure the photons that return and let us see it on this computer. Raj, get them some glasses. Spring to fire laser at the moon. Make it so. 2.5 seconds for the light to return. That's the moon. We hit the moon. <laughs> I'll have our line on the screen. The fact that we can do this is the only way of definitively proving that there are man-made objects on the moon, put there by a member of a species that only 60 years before had just invented the airplane. What species is that? Thank you, it's been fun. Yeah, thanks. Should we invite him to the party? No, just keep walking. Right, do you know the word bitching? Like, I've... the UK, that's not even a thing. It might be wherever you live, but definitely I've never heard it. The only other time I've ever heard it 
is it eleven from uh from Stranger Things? I'm pretty sure in one of the scenes she says bitching. Oh, it might have been eleven in a different show. I'm sure it's in that one though. About Stranger Things as well, mate. I cannot wait for season five to get on the channel, mate. It's gonna be sick. But I thought that was well cool, to be honest. I know that they didn't see the later comeback, which is a kind of a little bit of a deflating, you know, balloon. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've, you've pumped it up and you're excited for it to explode and then it just fizzles out a little bit. But at the end of the day, though, the concept and uh, what he's seeing, the actual gravity of what they could do, is actually really sick, honestly. It's really good. The only way to feel better about Penny going out with other guys is for you to get back on the horse. Phrases get back on the horse, <laughs> not Pause. If you want, I can turn you on to this great new dating site I found. Mm, no thanks. I can't bring the nitrogen tank down. Why not? All right, let me restate that. It's very heavy and I don't want to. You know what would be fun? Signing Sheldon up for online dating. May, I would love it. Coming! Damn you, you rat bastard. Zach was a perfectly nice guy and then you ruined him. How did I ruin him? Because in the olden days, I never would have known you as so stupid. He wasn't that stupid. Yes, he was. He thought you were going to blow up the moon. How is that my fault? You have destroyed my ability to tolerate idiots. Now come with me. Where are we going? We are going to have sex. What? I mean, <laughs> okay. Oh, all right, she's actually true there. You know, how many times have you been in scenarios in your life where you think something's just like sounded normal and then obviously you kind of move and integrate into a new environment or like, you know you get a couple of new friends or something and then you start to realize that you're like that was a bit weird that what i used to do or do you know what i mean like it's not as fun as i actually thought it was and penny's the same there you know she used to go out and date all these guys and she thought their sound their sound and she thought that leonard was like too clever but then the more she's hung around with leonard the more she's i've got to say fair play to her she's starting to get to grips with the you know the concept of what he does she's tried to learn she's educated herself her intellectual level has increased and obviously now when she's going out with the older people that she used to hang around with she's thinking do you know what i mean this is no longer my crowd and um i, I fully understand where she's coming from and to be honest you know i used to think that these looked like nerds but that's obviously first interpretations. I've said it before. I've met people in real life before that I've disliked. And then after being around them for a while, I had to think, yo, you're okay. And that's the same with these. Like, I think that they used to look like nerds. But now that obviously with nearly four seasons starting, I think they all look totally fine. And Leonard is a perfectly good match, I, I actually think, for Penny. I don't think that they rank massively far apart from each other, to be honest. In what universe is this low pulp? Good morning, Penny. Your <laughs> eyes in the back of your head. When one gets beaten up every other day in school, one of necessity develops a keen sense of hearing. Why I, my noise-canceling headphones proved ineffective last night. As a native Texan, I must say I've never heard the phrase yee-haw used in quite that context. <laughs> oh, God. In what universe is that lightly toasted? Where's Penny? She returned to her apartment, I presume to shower and vomit. Not necessarily in that order. Well, I have no difficulty believing you're not butter. Yo, margarine is nowhere near as good as butter. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. Um, I gotta run. Early shift. Okay, okay well, I'll walk down with you. I was thinking tonight maybe we could catch a movie. Oh, uh, yeah, tonight's not great for me. It doesn't have to be tonight. I'm free pretty much always. Sorry, I was drunk. I was lonely. I hated Zach. Can we just forget it never happened? No, it's pretty well imprinted on my brain. Can you please let it go? How am I supposed to let it go? You used me for sex! Morning, Mrs. Gunderson. Good morning, Leonard. Or should I say, yee-haw. Because you could hear it downstairs. <laughs> Dating site matched a woman with Sheldon. You mean an actual woman? Yeah, look. Breasts and everything. Leonard, you gotta see this. We found a match for Sheldon. Right now, Dr. Sheldon Cooper has to send an email to his perfect match. Greetings, fellow life form. I can't do it. Leslie. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, you? Uh, do you remember um, when we used to have sex? Uh, do you want, want to do that again? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Blondie dumped you? <laughs> she didn't dump me. We were just in different places in the relationship. So what do you say? <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> She's not coming back. Sheldon, hey, hi. Your surprise confuses me. I live here. What are you doing tomorrow afternoon? Well, tomorrow's Saturday. Saturday night is laundry night, so I'll be spending the pre-evening pre-sorting and pre-soaking. 
We put all your vital information into this dating site, answered all their questions just like you would, and they found a match for you. Please, even assuming you could answer any question the way I would, the algorithms used by matchmaking sites are complete hokum. Even Spock had a date once every seven years. He didn't date. It was pawn far. His blood boiled with mating lust. All right, you can have a hot chocolate. As I will not be engaging in this nonsense, my choice of beverage is moot. But for the record, I only drink hot chocolate in months with an R in them. I've hidden the dirty sock from the roof somewhere in your apartment. Unless you're willing to come with us to meet this girl, it will remain there forever. Curse you. <laughs> oh, hey, Leonard. I was a perfectly happy, geeky, little lonely guy. Come on. We're gonna have sex and it's not gonna mean a thing. <laughs> Are you out of mind? <laughs> it worked for Petty, but not him. Really starting to think there's a double standard here. In a few minutes, when I gloat over the failure of this enterprise, how would you prefer I do it? I'm Amy Farrah Fowler, you're Sheldon Cooper. Hello, Amy Farrah Fowler. I'm being blackmailed with a hidden dirty sock. If that was slang, I'm unfamiliar with it. If it was literal, I share your aversion to soiled hosiery. Yes, I'm here because my mother and I have agreed that I will date at least once a year. Now, before this goes any further, you should know that all forms of physical contact up to and including coitus are off the table. May I buy you a beverage? They do kind of look like the same personality. Good God, what have we done? Imagine two of them. I've said that I'd love it though. I actually would love it. Now, if I was them, I would hate it for a little bit, you know, because Sheldon is a person that you've got to have a little time around, you know, you've got to get used to it. Do you know what I mean? At first, you taste it, you're like, oh, I'm not too sure. And then, you know, you keep having a bit and you're like, do you know what? He's actually decent. And that's the same as well. But to be honest, if she, what I mean, I have no idea if she's going to be in the show, but even if she's in season four for a little bit, if she plays anywhere near the same kind of character as Leonard's mum, then they've smashed it, haven't they? Let's be honest. I reckon that may have introduced this character, this Amy, because of the reaction of how Leonard's mum actually was with Sheldon. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you drop something in. Prime example, the Vampire Diaries. You know, it was rocking, it was rolling. Everybody was loving the Vampire Diaries. You had Damon, you had Stefan, and then they introduced the originals. They brought in Nicklaus and they brought in Elijah, and then everybody was like, wow, they are good. And... Then they brought their own franchise and they got their own show, 100 episodes. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's the same here. They had his character, they had his mum. She come in, she was intellectual. She was kind of on uh, Sheldon's wavelength. They bounced off each other. They got along. They were different to everybody else. It's kind of strange, but really interesting. And then everybody's like, that's a great character, but she is Leonard's mum and we can't keep her in all the time. What if... We mirrored it and brought in a younger female and we used it as a counterpart and got them dating and had them going out with each other. How good would that be? And I feel like that is possibly what has happened and I'm all for it. I'm all game. I'm excited. I can't wait for season four now. Got Bernadette, potentially Amy. So yeah, if you look at it, we've got four males, three females, seven characters, expanded from five. I'm excited for it, honestly. Cannot wait. I can't... Honestly, I'm, if she's going to be in season four as well as Bernadette, I'm so excited, honestly. I cannot wait. Okay, and that's going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out the channel today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. So, season three is in the bag. And yes, what a great way to end it, to be honest. You know, um, I've enjoyed the season. I thought, again, I thought it was like a slow burner and it picked up at the end. And I feel like all of the seasons have ended up really, really well, to be honest. I feel like maybe season two was the most consistent throughout of it that I enjoyed the most. Don't know if it was the best season. Potentially, they're all going off the top of my head right now, concluding three. I feel like season one, for me, it was a slow burner getting used to the characters and getting into it. And then, obviously, I really enjoyed it and we progressed forward into season two. And I feel like we just picked up on rocks of it. And I feel like that was a good, consistent, solid season. Moved into season three, we had a little bit of slow start again and picked up and introduced two characters. You know what I mean? Well one character in Bernadette who's coming through kind of like the middle and been in and out. And then, obviously, we've got the, the potentially new Sheldon's girlfriend or whoever uh, you know you would call it an acquaintance a friend to benefit a partner a new friend to the group I don't know uh, potentially coming in at the end of season three and that is a big positive honestly it really is it is potentially how I feel like what happened uh, as I just mentioned there that Sheldon was uh, really good with obviously Leonard's mum someone smart he could bounce off it it's really good to see him out of his shell bonding with obviously the opposite sex you know what i mean i never really actually knew what sexuality he was as well to be honest you know we never really addressed it he's attained the guy's phone number before he's attained the girl's phone number before he's never really expressed any sexual desires he was even talking about coitus then 
that's a mad word as well that these use all the time and she said it was off the table and he was like mate can i buy you a drink do you know what I mean? so i have no idea it could be one of those relationships like leonard's mum was saying that she only ever had intercourse with his dad when it was time to conceive you know what i mean like who knows what uh leonard i mean sorry what sheldon's uh into in that but i'm excited to see uh what we do because i feel like he is probably the best character in the show he's not the funniest character in the show but he is the most interesting one and i've got to say he delivers his lines and his bazingas and all that really really well i feel like he gets the hardest job if i'm being totally honest and uh you know i'm excited to see if he does get a female counterpart somebody on his wavelength and somebody so clever coming in how we actually do it we've never really seen penny and bernadette kind of like together spending time seeing them at cheesecake factory but not really bonding but if howard actually does end up being with her and obviously uh, this amy comes in a little bit more we could have a good episode and instead of it always being howard and um you know rise together or leonard and um you know sheldon we could actually have uh bernadette pennett and amy how good would that be so i'm excited for it can't wait for season four thanks for checking out today's episode if you did enjoy it please smash a like really helps out subscribe if you're new and as always i'll catch you in the next one cheers guys